it was it's very close to where I used to get high and run the streets and do other things, you know, crimes mm-hmm. and stuff. But I don't I don't I don't go over that way. I just come over here to work and then I leave from this area, go back home. Mm-hmm. You know, and and they see that. You know, I don't be out be running the streets. You know, I don't because I lived that life already. Now it's about being peaceful. I like peace mm-hmm. today. Well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, I'm curious to know a little bit. So I'm also interested in, um, like, Muslims in prison. So I'm interested yeah. to know if you ever came in contact with any Muslims while in prison. Well, Matt, since you said that, uh, that's funny because I took uh, my shahada to become a Muslim. I took my mm-hmm. shahada to become a Muslim on my last term being in prison. Uh, and this was this was uh about in uh two thousand and I think it was like eleven, two thousand eleven. Mm-hmm. One of my homeboys one of my homeboys is a Muslim and I was so so caught up trying to find a God of my understanding. I even tried to become a Muslim because I thought that that would work for me. And so I I took my shahada and I became a Muslim. And uh, that didn't last that long, though, because I was reading the Quran. We were we was doing the Ramadan. You read the Quran so much a day, you know, and... I was reading it, and something came up in the Quran that I didn't agree with. So mm-hmm. I went to the email and, and I talked to them about it, and they told me, "Yes, this is what this is what this is." So I said, "Man, I can't do this. You telling me that my mother, grandmother, and everybody else I know who believe in Jesus Christ is going to hell?" I said, "No, I can't. I don't believe that." I don't believe that, so I can't. I can't do this. I don't believe in it. I'm not going to do it. So mm-hmm. I quit. And I quit, and once again, I was lost. I didn't know what I was going to do. Who, you know? And I was that way until until I, I asked for help that day. I told you, you know, I didn't know what to believe in, you know, because I've been let down so much. You know, thinking I'm doing the right thing. I want to get close to God, but I just didn't know how. And it was always in me to to believe in the God who of my understanding. You know, so yeah, I don't, you know, my God is a loving God. He's not gonna. He don't. He don't. It's, it's a lot of. It's a lot of apes out here, and he's not gonna condemn you because of your belief. Not my mm-hmm. God. You know, mm-hmm. you know. So I and I couldn't I couldn't be with a group that just because you don't believe in the, their way you're going to go to hell. No, I can't. That's no. That's not. That's not a loving God. That's not my God. Mm-hmm. That's not my God. So mm-hmm. you know that, that's that's how I ended up getting out of that. Mm-hmm. Did you? Um, just curious to know if you talk to any other anyone else you were incarcerated with who was Muslim about that um... I did yes I'm curious. do everybody believe this and uh, when later on I asked someone else uh, they told me no and the person that would told me that was the truth he said they didn't know what they were talking about. It's not. It's not like mm-hmm. that, you mm-hmm. know. So, you know, I was already out, and I didn't. I didn't know because two people, like two or three people, told me yes, and then I found out from a couple of more people it was a no. So I, I didn't know what to, what to do. So I just left it alone. Mhm. Mhm. And so, 
you know, I thought it was, I thought it was going to be good for me because of the discipline. I see mm-hmm. Muslims as different people, you know, mm-hmm. so I thought it was going to be real good for me because, you know, I need discipline in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, but finding out, I have it, I have it in me anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, that's you know, it's it's just you know, and I see, I see, I've seen a couple of Muslims that I was locked up with, and when they got out, they were, they were, all that was fake. What they was talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh, it just like they, they ended up going back doing the same thing. Well, against what they were saying in jail, they ended up going back doing different stuff. And I'm not saying it just on their part. I see Christians, Muslim, Catholic, Buddhist, everybody, you know, fall back, you know, because their environment, they're out of, they're out of jail or whatever, so they go back to being them. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's, it's not just them. Do you think so? Like on that topic, do you think it's possible to be a Muslim, a Christian, a Catholic, anything like that, and still engage in some of this, like you know, kind of like behavior, this uh kind of like the behavior that gets you in trouble like can both things be true at the same time well the way i look at it the way i look at it if you are a christian catholic muslim whatever and you are you are living god like you wouldn't have that desire to do the things that's going to get you in trouble Mm-hmm. You know, if if you are really living by the book, you wouldn't have those desires to cheat, steal, lie, you know, because one thing about me today, my program is about honesty. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, you know, I would rather, I would rather a person come to me because I'm over, I'm over a lot of people at my position, where in my job, I have a lot of people up under me, and I tell them the truth. The the truth will not get you in trouble. When you lie to me, that's when I have doubts now, and now I gotta watch you. And you know, it's it's all bad then. If you tell me the truth, I I got I, we can work this out. I'm not gonna you're not gonna get in trouble for the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, and like I said before, man, I, I live an honest program. You know, it's, it, honesty is good. Because mm-hmm. if you lie, then you got to come up with another lie, then another lie. Then you're going to forget one of those lies. The truth is easy. It's smooth. It's going to stay the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so... Now I'm interested in learning a little bit about what it's been like for you since you've been out, and I'm particularly interested in employment, housing, health, and social networks. So we'll start with employment. Um, Could you tell me a little bit what it's been like applying for jobs and um, yeah, what your employment history has looked like since you've been out? My, uh, My employment history... Well, when I got out in 14, I told you I I uh, I, uh, I wasn't I wasn't uh, looking for a job. So my for me for 14 to 16 was back and forth in jail, and I didn't care about a job. Mm-hmm. But from 16 from 16 to like 18, I was in a program, and uh. From 18, from, well, no, from 17, from 17 until now, I have been working. I went to a program at, in 2016, and from, I stayed in there a year, then I started working for that program. And, you know, mm-hmm. I got my license. 
I got my license and I became a 